The uh, steam is around at six o'clock in the morning, and uh, you can go to rest in about three hours, and three hours back again, and uh, back here at six with the mail. And when was the steamer running until? It was still running in the twenties. Did you ever get on it yourself? No, I never went to steamer. So when did the pier fall into disrepair? Was it used after the steamer stopped? Oh yes. It was used for coal boats and timber boats. And uh, it was a busy place at one time when the, when the coal boat was in. The, it was all hands on deck and they to unload the coal boat, which was done by hand. They dropped a bucket half a ton at the time into the hold and the men below in the hold loaded the bucket up. Let's see that one tipped from, from this bucket to a lorry or a cart. Tipped in there and tied it round here, round the road and back up to the coal yard here and tipped over the chute and coal fell down into the coal yard. There'll be about a hundred tons of coal we come under the time. Did you ever use the pier yourself? Well, I, I used it for my uh, launch, which I had in the 50s. I, in fact, I cut the bit, I removed some of the piles so that I could get in closer there and had a low pier built there. And what but, did you use this launch for? Well, I, I bought it for fun for myself, but I couldn't get anybody to go out with me on the loch, so I went to Fort Yes and started charging the tourists half a crown a time for a start. And I enjoyed that very much. What size of boat was this? It was about uh, 26 feet, I would say. It had a Perkins P6 diesel engine. It was originally a, a seaplane tender. Where did you get it from? I bought it in Aberdeen and I sailed it up from Aberdeen to Loch Ness in 24 hour sailing time. And was that an epic? That was an epic. Adventure? Yeah, yeah, it was good, I enjoyed that. I had... What was it called? The Vigilant. The Vigilant. I sold it to um, Donald Gillis and he had finished it. It still plies on the island of Harris, I think, as far as I know. Did you make uh, too much business with it and the tourists? Yes, quite a bit. I upped my price to five shillings, but um, then regulations became tighter and I, I could only carry 12 passengers instead of my 20. So and it was fairly uh, packed with 20 passengers on board, was it? Oh, I had more than 20 on it at times. But uh, anyway, the boat what, what kind of trip did you do? How far did you go? I went out for an hour at a time and came as far as the horseshoe from Fort Augustus. That's just, uh, what, two or three miles? Yeah. So, what's this uh, apparatus on a couple of the rails up there? Well, the rails are uh, defiled and out into the lock and they're, they're fully on it which I used to call, haul the boat ashore in the winter time and paint it, paint the hull. The rails were used in the tunnels. And what's, uh, what's this, uh, the bank over there looks kind of artificial with all the birch yeah, trees on it. That, that is artificial, which must be millions of tons of rocks still there out of the tunnel from, the tunnel run from uh, the tail race, which is in the river there, up to the Lindsay <coughs> power station or the Dundragon power station below the Dundragon dam. And so it's just a it's tunnel spoil dumped into the loch. Must be a couple of acres of it. It's bigger than that, it's getting washed away gradually. What's this building here? Now, this was the 
the, the waiting room, which was along the front of it, the uh, store, and also what we call the beer salon. In later days, the, it was converted into a bar. And the beer salon was where we kept the beer, and uh, that end was the saloon. And what's it made of? Hmm? What kind of material is it made of? Wood. And where'd the wood oh, come yes, from? Oh yes, the wood. Oh well, you can see. see the, can you see the boards? These were wide boards. They were coffin boards. And how it's come you lamp. got a hold of coffin boards? Well, we made coffins here. They made the coffins in the... in that shed. So, uh your father and grandfather were undertakers. Yeah, oh yes. As you are yourself. That's right. Mm -hmm. And how did that start? How come uh, how come they got into the business of undertaking? Well, still today the undertakers are joiners. And my great grandfather was a joiner. What was and his name? He was Donald. And he was known as the carrier or the carrier because he also had a horse and cart, or maybe two, and... He lived uh, up at Fasach, did he? He lived at Fasach originally, and later at a Rose Cottage, which is where the wee cord is now. So what's this stone construction here? Now, this platform was the coal yard. The coal came down the chute from the main, main road up above, tipped over the bank and down the chute, and we loaded lorries and carts here. There's a concrete base there. So tell us a wee bit about the Naughty Ferry and where it went there. Well, uh, oh, here's a uh, boat from in the road, fishing for salmon. You can see the knocky burn coming down that gorge there. Right. Now the the boathouse is at the bottom of that somewhere there, and uh, the ferry ran over from this pier to the boathouse over there. You can see this guy's uh, fishing license, that yellow patch in the front. Of there. Any luck? You got a fish? Sure, Dash. Pull. Oh, lovely. <laughs> lovely. <laughs> so, where, where would that boat have come from? They all, uh, they all um, park in the li river, the river here. The river mouth. The river mouth. So. There's a fair collection of uh, wrecked vehicles down here. What, what are all these? Well, they're not all mine, but that one, that red one there was a mail bus, the 11 seater uh, Austin minibus. So, ran. how come you had a mail bus? Well, mails came into the pier. <laughs> and uh, we delivered the mails to the post office, uh, which was near the church there for many years. And uh, probably right way back in. 1880, when my grandfather became here master here, he also became mail contractor, delivering mails right up the glen. How so? There's the end there, there was a pier cottage. Uh, my grandfather and father and myself, I rented it from the state. <coughs> and before my time, but uh, sometimes the family used to move in there when they were able to let the two bigger houses.
So what happened here? This was the old garage, the workshop and filling station. There were two pumps on this plinth there. And we sold petrol there. For many years? From 1920 till 1960. And did you just did you just sell petrol, or what else happened here? Well, these are the oil cabinets. We sold oil in paint, quart measures out of these cabinets. We also did all sorts of repairs here. That's what this uh, construction here is for. In a later for. stage, we used the ramp here. They used the ramp for repairing buses and lorries. I had one time we had run six buses from here. The buses were. Uh, around 30 seaters at the time. Tell us a wee bit about Tenebrug. Tenebrug. Oh. This is the old part of the old building here. Was, uh, this must be more than 100 years old, perhaps a lot more than 100 years old. It used to be a store and a garage and whatnot. What happened to the rest of it? Well, the main building, the house, was there. It was burnt down ten, ten years ago, say. And then this small addition to the building instead. There was a bar there and a uh, restaurant for a short time. But the big house was a guest house for many years. It was built by my grandfather. And who bought it from him? Colonel Lane bought it for him from him, for, from him at in 1920. And how my long grandfather also built this house here in 1908, uh, later on that. Right. And after Colonel Lane, who had it? A uh, Mrs. Patterson had it and she developed it as a guest house and her daughter had it after her till about 1980. That was Sheena Patterson. Sheena Patterson. Then Graham Duncan bought it and... Uh, Put the pub in. Well, after, after the main house was burnt, it made this into a pub and built the first new section here. This garage was built about the same time as the house. What did you do with this one? Well, it's always... They used to keep... Put the cars inside there every night. But now we don't bother. What was the bottom garage made from? It was... Uh, the remains of the old public hall, which was below, built below steels and was blown down about 1928. And uh, my father bought the debris and uh, built a garage down there. The payment for that was he, he uh, obtained the rock, the stone, which is now the War Memorial, and he brought that down from Winverwick using horsepower. What's this vehicle here? This is a 1930 or about that uh, Ford Model A. Uh, I bought it in about 1965. It was originally a breakdown wagon belonging to Cordner, not Cordner's, but uh, Chapman's who preceded Cordner's as Ford agents in MLS. Uh, it was originally made as a breakdown vehicle by Ford's, uh, one of about 56 only. I used it as a breakdown vehicle for several years and after that I used the crane blown ship which was over there and uh, on other chassis. Two or three different chassis. When was the last time it was uh, moving then? Well, Donald got it going about, how long ago do you think? Oh, five years five ago. Five years ago, got it going, we towed it along and started it up and it ran. And, and uh, 
we put it back in here to be more, to get mature. more than a little deep. 